Hi, Jamie with you again. I hope you're very well indeed. Well, I wanted to talk about this beautiful thing behind me here, which is a Class A British-built QM3 Chilton 12-channel console that I picked up recently. It was uh, discovered in Canada. Uh, it was an ex-hire um, piece of equipment. And incidentally, the BBC in, in England were, were famous for using these in their OB, their outside broadcast vans. And I can see why. They're tight little units. Um, there was a 24 channel version of these, so a 12 and a 24 version, uh, channel version. Um, and yeah, they're quite light to get around. Um, they're quite small. And Class A mic preamps, very smooth sounding EQ, kind of nevish sounding EQ and there has been some blurbs and some people talking about these on the internet suggesting that they're like a baby Neve console. I would say partly yes and partly nothing like a Neve at all and I would say the difference for me sonically um, is that this console in terms of its mic preamps and EQ is much darker sounding um, so not not dirtier or, or not more distorted just darker sounding more brooding a bit nasty a bit thicker um, if you add some bottom end it's kind of thicker and supier it, it really broadens things out um, it has lovely high shelving EQ and quite usable notchable center frequencies which you can click between. So um, as I mentioned this Chilton was found in Canada. I spoke to a seller there and managed a whole lot of paperwork to get it onto an Emirates flight to import it into Australia which was a huge ordeal, quite expensive as well but thankfully the person selling it was able to build a shipping crate which was a beautiful job. So um, hard to get this thing here but it's been um, certainly worthwhile and a great product that I'll use probably for the most of my life. Um, it's capable of doing music recording, but also voiceovers, classical music recording, um, mastering. It's really of that high grade class A low noise um, quality. Um, it's also very, very functional. It's originally designed as a um, eight bus or a kind of a quasi eight bus. It's actually four buses which switch out to um, eight different channels for sending to eight track tape machines. So as you would guess, it's kind of like a late seventies style of product in terms of build era. And I'm going to give you a bit of a sound test and just show you how the EQ sounds, notch through them, notch through some of the mid-range, um, the high shelving and the low shelving to give you a bit of a feel of what it's capable of. So um, here we go. Okay, starting from the top here, I'm going to go through just one of the channel sections. As you can sort of see here, uh, there is a, uh, a VU here uh, with post pre-fade switch. Um, interesting, up here there is a high pass and low pass filters that just dial in like this um, coming to the start of the input chain here um, the gain for the preamp for the mic preamp um, there's a pad switch here um, little toggles quite nice little switches then we've got a fixed um, 10k shelving high frequency coming down to the mid frequency here um, this is selectable so there's a little switch it has four stops one two three four they go from 5.6k 2.8k uh, then 1.4k and 700 Hertz switchable which are all very musical um, notches then interesting is the, uh, the shelving low EQ um, and you'll notice there's a switch here for switching the EQ out and in at point 0.2 and point 0.1. Point 0.1 I believe is a 100 hertz shelving EQ for the bottom end and in situation 2 or position 2 you get 80 hertz there. So very flexible EQ unit. Um, we'll demo these in a moment but very warm and musical EQs. Um, coming further down, auxiliary 1, pre and post switching for that we've got an auxiliary 2 send and a 3 send also here there's a little insert switch so the 
great thing about these children consoles is the very configurable patching areas on the back of the console. So you can switch in and out and insert. Auxiliary 3 coming down, auxiliary 4 and next to that is just a like a cut switch for the channel. Um, a pan here, Q switch for other routing um, if you prefer to send to other devices. Um, yep, panning here, uh, that is enabled by this pan switch here. Uh, there's a R uh, or a record fader, should I say remix fader. So panning switch here and a remix engage button here which engages this remix master fader here. Okay, and coming back to here, then we've got four sends, one, two, three, four group sends, which come over to these lovely four send faders. Incidentally, it's actually a uh, four bus console, but it's switchable to eight sends, which effectively makes it very useful for sending tracks or channels to eight track recording. Coming back over here, so they were our one, two, three, four sends, um, channel numbering here on this lovely aluminium panel and then the Penny and Giles long throw super silky faders um, similar, to, similar to those found in Neve consoles if you've never used these you should touch them and feel the joy of lovely smooth noise free faders with um, they've got Teflon um, tracks in them and lovely metal brushes that are hand soldered onto the the guided track here on the base. So that's looking at a Chilton channel strip. I hope I've covered that fairly well. Um, incidentally, you've got over here in this master section loads of configurable bits and pieces. Some auxiliary returns for one and two there. The sends and the remix fader, the master fader there. This is a gain control for your control room. Oh, excuse me, that's not it. That's the one. That's the monitor control room gain there. And there's a dim switch in here as well for that. Very handy. And this section over here is a return mixer for your 8-track recorder with pans and sending that to the monitor bus or to groups or whatever you want to do. Gain for those line inputs. All configurable and patchable on the back. Um, some more returns here, A1 and 2 pans for your auxiliaries, etc, etc. More configuring things in here, there's an oscilloscope with tones, 1k, 5k, 10k um, and some other auxiliary sends, uh, masters over here. So really quite a configurable console, very beautiful EQs. Let's have a listen to some of this Chilton Class A preamp EQ now. Okay, let's have a listen to some kick drum, 10k. Now I've got selected here 5.6k. Two point eight, one point four, seven hundred hertz. Pull that out a little bit. Okay, this is switched to one, so we're at a hundred hertz here. Bit woofy. If I switch to position two, down to eighty hertz. A little bit more musical. Really nice. I quite like that. 5.6. Quite a good sound. Okay, here we are with a drum bounce. Okay, EQ in. Up in. That's again 5.6. Bottom at 80 hertz.
about in there's really quite a lot of air because there's such broad broad shelving 10k here it's also boosting a lot of that 16 to 20k curve I'm just playing with that frequency there the 5.6 you can add bite pull it out I'm just going to cut the EQ EQ in So that's my Chiltern QM3 mixing console. What a beautiful thing. And thank you for joining me on Talking Sonics. Please uh, subscribe if you haven't done before. I will be back to talk to you soon about more musical instruments, mixing and recording equipment, and also uh, the structure of, of how we go about recording. This is a channel where I want people to you know, ask me a lot of questions about what I do and whether you've got any problems you'd like to discuss. And I'm must say I'm overwhelmed by the comments on my video relating to recording the vocals without headphones. It's been a great topic and uh, yeah, quite, a, quite an interesting one for pitch. So if you haven't seen that and you're having trouble pitching your vocals, have a look at that video. I'll leave that in the comments below. Please subscribe, ring the bell. I will see you again soon. Thank you for joining me on Talking Sonics.